What's going on everyone? I've got a special uh, presentation for you today. This is going to be a little bit more advanced stuff um, and it's because I'm partially making this for my team uh, on the marketing side. So one of the things that I have found has been a consistent source of new marketing for us is understanding data. And so I think some people are much better at telling stories than I am, um, but I'm pretty decent at slicing data. And so um, the nice thing is that there's always new inferences that you can derive from data that you can make the same thing mean different things. And so um, for example, I'll give you some statistics that we have um, that we've based entire campaigns around. So uh, one campaign that was our most successful campaign that we've ever run was a one year later campaign. And so what that was, was we took all of our clients that had been with us for over a year and measured all of their stats and measured their stats from before they were with us until now a year later and showed the difference, right? And the, the differences were crazy, you know, 250,000, 500,000 a year, a million dollars a year extra, like they're just massive differences. And so from that, from that one, you know, measuring example, there's so many different subdivisions of data that you can use, right? You can just say, hey, one year later, our average client is up this, right? That would be one way to do the data. Another way to do that would be like one year later, our top 20% of clients have added over $400,000 a year uh, to their yearly revenue. Another one would be uh, the bottom, you know, 80% are at this, right? Um, and so there's, there's all these are like one in, here's another way of doing it. One in five gyms uh, who's been with us over a year is at is over Z, right? And so there's different variables that you can play with, right? One is the percentage of people, right? The next is the goal. And then the next is the duration piece. So you have these kind of three wheels that you can spin together uh, to make really interesting statistics. And you can and you can you can base so many campaigns around it. Like another campaign that we have that's launching soon is um, we just we just we just measured one in five point five gyms uh, is over a uh, million dollar a year run rate for us, right? And so all these, you know, so for me, it's easy because like, you know, other people are like seven figure gym, blah, blah, blah. And so for me, I'm like, well, they're talking about it. We're doing it, right? And so I can always position myself because mo most people don't even capture their own data anyway, so they don't even know. And it's usually because it's not good, right? They already know they don't have any million dollar gym, so they don't need to go measure that, right? We do know. And so one in 5.5, so that's 18%. Now, if you're thinking about from a marketing perspective, would you think 18% of gyms that we work with are seven figure gyms? Maybe, I don't think that sounds as compelling as one in 5.5, like really, one in five? Like that's not that bad, right? And the thing is, is you can also invert that and say, all right, but 4.5 out of 5.5 gyms hit this, right? So it's like, I can play on the, on the, on the, the, the desire that people have to win the lottery, it's survivorship bias, like that people think they're gonna be the one, right? But I can also play on the inverse, which is something that I like doing a lot, which is I love playing on averages, I love playing on medians, um, with data because it's like, hey, this is just what the normal person does, right? Like, and here's what's cool. You can always say after you say an average, that also means half of people are above this. And people are like, wow, well, I consider myself above average. So I'm going to be above that because everyone thinks they're above average, right? And so when you're clumping data together, you can use those three wheels, right? Wheel one is over what duration? Wheel two is what is the, um, what is the outcome? Um, and then I literally can't even remember what the, oh, and then the percentage of clients that, that achieve that, right? So it's percentage of clients, the outcome, and then the time duration. And so you have these wheels that you can mix and match. And we, even when you say percentage of clients, you can say percentage of clients. You can say the top percentage, the bottom percentage, the median, the average, right? Um, and you can also say one in, right? So there's different, different ways. So you can also say the fractional version, or like one fifth of, right? So all of these, are, that's just like, that was just on the one wheel of, um, what percentage of clients, right? What percentage, one fifth, one in however many, the fractional amount, the top percentage, the bottom percentage, so you can invert either one of those. So one in five or four out of five, right? That would be the inversion of the same stat. And so when I'm using all of that, like this is what I'm running through, and this is what I've had a really hard time teaching my team, which is why I'm making this right now. Um, is that like, this is what I'm running through when I'm thinking, when I'm looking at like the, the data they get back from customer support, or uh, uh, excuse me, customer success, is like this, they're like, here's, here's all of the gyms that we have. I'm like, okay, how can we say this differently? How can we say this in a compelling way and make it a hook for our marketing, right? Um, and so that was, that was all the examples I had for uh, percentage of clients, right? Now, if we're talking uh, time duration, right? So with time duration, I might, I'm gonna be thinking uh, super long, long, long time away. And here's what's cool about when you use long, longer durations away. If someone's been with you for a year, the likelihood that they've succeeded is very high, especially in an education-based business. So I, I love pulling out the one year or two year later pieces because one, it shows that people stay with me for a long time, which means that I continually provide value, right? So that's social proof of continued value creation, which I like a lot. So 
boom, when you have the long-term duration, it's great. And that's an advantage, especially if you're an older player in the space. Having those one-year, two-year later testimonials is something that no one else can show that you can show to also demonstrate your long-standingness in the, in the space, right? But on top of that, somebody who's been with you for that long is going to usually have a very good outcome. And so if I just say, hey, the people who've been with me for over a year average this, that it's like, wow, that's crazy, right? And so the data will, will, will give a very positive um, impression of what you're marketing, right? Flip side um, is that you can cut it at different different times, right? You can look at first week, you can look at first 30 days, you can look at first two months, right? And so the thing is, is if you have this data on a regular basis, uh, you can you can timestamp this stuff and really you can slice it and find that the slice that you're like, oh, this is really good. Like for us, like our, our average gym in the first, uh, I think it's first 15 days, not 15 days, excuse me, first two weeks does 15,500, all right? Uh, in, in additional revenue. That's the average, which means half people get better than that right? Crazy. And so, um, and I, I give you the other stat earlier, one in 5.5 gyms is a million dollar gym, right? And so I'm, I'm, I can play with these, you know, with these numbers, because I could have said 18%, or I could have said with the percent of the, the 15,500, I could say that's a, what's the outcome, right? The outcome wheel could be, what's the increase, right? If it what's the increase, it might be like the average person, you know, doubles what they do in revenue in the first 14 days. That's a different way of saying it, right? Um, I don't know what, I don't know what the actual number is because I don't, I don't have that one offhand, but like that would be something that I'd be, that, that's something I would ask my team. I'd be like, Hey, figure out what the fraction is here. Is it a doubling? Is it a 1.5 X? Is it a 30% increase? Well, 30% increase doesn't sound as good as 15,500, right? So I'm going to say that one instead. And so when we're talking about increases, there's four ways you can show it. One is a, a, a percent increase, which is this went up by X percent, right? The next is an absolute increase, which is additional 15,500, right? Um, the next would be uh, the actual total number made, which would be their revenue plus the increase, boom, right? Uh, which would, would be different, but similar, right? Uh, so you've got the, the, just the increase, you've got the total amount made, you've got the percentage increase, you've got uh, a relative increase, which is one that I like, which is what does 15,500 buy you, right? So 15,500 might be like, um, I would have to look up industry averages, but I'd say the, you know, maybe industry average for uh, a micro gym rent might be, let's say $2,000 a month. So I would say in the first 30 days, the average gym in our program pays off three quarters or nine months of rent. Wow. That sounds kind of interesting, right? Like that's, that's compelling. That's unique, right? So hopefully you're following along with me. You're like the, the three big wheels, right? Wheel number one, you've got is what's the outcome? Wheel, wheel number two is the time duration. And wheel number three is what percentage of clients you know, achieve this outcome. And so when you're playing with these three wheels and you're slicing the data, all of these wheels have variables, which is why you can slice data in so many different directions. But for me, this is usually what I will search for. Like this is what I will hunt for. I will look for the piece of data that tells the story that, that, that the copy can't tell or it can reinforce the story that the copy tells and makes it far more compelling, right? Now, mind you, you have to be absolutely compliant when you use numbers, right? Which is one of the things I also like doing it because we track our stuff and most of our, you know, most people in our space don't because they're, you know, still figuring out how to, you know, market and figure out their business. But the, the thing is, is most people don't track this stuff. And so I have a huge competitive advantage because I've been tracking this stuff for years, right? And on top of that, we have, we have pretty decent um, metrics around this stuff, especially around client success. And so with that, I can hunt and say, okay, Let's look at uh, new clients, you know, first, first eight weeks, right? What's, how much, what's the increase in revenue? Okay. And the thing is, is everything I just talked about was one stat, right? I just talked about revenue. I could use those same three wheels with time, uh, the customer outcome, and then what percentage of them achieved it. I could use those same, same three wheels with any of the stats. I could use it with profit. I could use it with revenue. I could use it with churn. I could use it with, um, uh, I could even use it with growth percentage, right? I could use it with, like, there's, there's so many different ways I can, I can use those three wheels in my marketing, but usually this will be the central core concept that I will make an entire campaign around, right? Because at the end of the day, there's only so many ways for me to say, we make gyms more money, right? Like, I mean, and the thing is, at the end of the day, everyone promises that. So the question is, how can I make um, a different, more unique promise? And how can I make it more compelling and believable that they will achieve it? Right. And so that's kind of why I use data is most of the times the central selling point that I have for any program that I sell. Now, the good thing is, is that and I've always done it that way because 
I'm usually way more convicted because it's, it's easy to have conviction in stats because those are what they are. So I can have absolute conviction that this is what it is. So take it or leave it, these are the stats, right? Like you can choose, to, you know, if I said, I, my, you know, my weight loss program has an 87% success rate of people hitting, you know, over 15 pounds, then, then like me even say, like, how about this? I'll say it even differently. Let's say, let's say I had a, let's say my success rate of people hitting over, I have a, I have a 70% success rate of people hitting over 12 pounds lost in their first six weeks with me, right? There's two variables that I'm playing, actually three again, which is what percentage of the customers achieve X result, right? And I can change X result because I say what percentage of customers achieve over, over 30 pounds lost. It'd be much smaller. It'd only be like 10%, right? And sometimes it's worth saying t the top 10% of our clients hit X. I think it works better with business stuff. But like in a weight loss scenario, that would be that would be an example. It's like I have this percentage of customers who achieve this percent. And I can move these, right? Until I find a sweet spot where I look in the data and I'm like, huh, 70% of our clients hit over 16 pounds lost. That's pretty good, right? In this period of time. And so now I can start marketing that because I have the data to support it and substantiate it, right? And so when I'm thinking about new hooks, right? Here's a different one that I ran that crushed it for us, which is, I told you earlier about the 5.5 gyms. Uh, one in 5.5 gyms is a million dollar gym. Here's another way you can do it with the time. I didn't even get into the time duration one yet. Is that I can say one in uh, every, excuse me, every X days, X minutes, X hours, X weeks, X months, we achieve a Y, right? And so I found out, because I looked at our stats, and I think the, the last year we had done, gosh, I don't know, it was like, I honestly can't remember the number, but I do remember the outcome. It was, um, I think we had created like 50 something, uh, seven figure gyms in 2019 or 2020, something like that. Anyways, point is, is we had created that many. And I was like, well, there's 52 weeks in a year. That means that one in every 7.7 .7 days, we create another seven figure gym. So that means every, basically every week we're cranking out another seven figure gym. So it takes the idea of like, this is how many of these outcomes we've had, right? So again, in that weight loss example, I could say, how many people have we had lose, you know, 20 pounds, right? Over, you know, over the last year. And they might say, you know, we've had shit. We've had, we've had 200 people hit that. I'd be like, cool. So we can say every two days, another person crosses 20 pounds lost at my facility. Wow. Isn't that a different way of saying X percent of people hit this goal in X period of time, right? So there's, there's these different ways of slicing it. Um, and so I would implore you, and this is also for my team, that when we're, when we're looking at what our, our main hook, our main messaging that we're going to wrap the whole campaign around um, is let's look at the data, right? And let's think about the three wheels. What's the outcome? Uh, what percentage of people hit it? Over what time duration? And then play with all of them, right? With the time duration, it's one in every how many days, every how many minutes, every how many whatever. Is it, is it over one year? Is it in the first 30 days, in the first six weeks? You know, whatever. Like, is that, that's the time duration. The customer, I uh, already said the, all the million ways of, of slicing the, the outcome um, and the percentage, right? And so hopefully that makes sense for you. Hope you found that valuable. Um, I, that probably give you unlimited ways of slicing your own data, but I'm telling you it's one of the most compelling things in the world because it's just true. So I'll leave you with that. Keep being awesome. That was a, a huge marketing hack that has made me a tremendous amount of money. So use it and uh, be fruitful. Bye.